what do we mean by perfect competition? A definition of perfect competition could be the condition under which all market participants are price takers. In other words, all buyers and sellers have to accept the price as determined by market forces. None of us can set the price. We're all price takers, not price makers. Certain conditions need to be in place before we can say perfect competition exists. First, there must be many buyers and sellers for a specific product. No one buyer or seller must be able to influence or dictate the selling price. It's not something that is, you, you can measure immediately. Uh, it's, it's, it's a policy that you bring into a market. You try to make the playing, the, the, the playing fields level. You try to bring competition into it. And over time, the idea is that over time prices should come down because companies are now competing with one another. But it, it doesn't mean that because a cartel was broken up today, tomorrow prices are going to drop. Um, really, it's a cultural thing that needs to flow into the market. Companies must understand that they need to be competing with one another. Secondly, the product that we're looking at must be homogenous, which means that the product that's sold by all sellers is the same. So it doesn't matter from which seller the consumers buy it from. All buyers and sellers must also have complete and correct knowledge about the marketplace. So for example, buyers must know what the market price is and will therefore not buy from any seller that's more expensive. Shortly before Christmas, um, in December 2006, the bread companies being Premier, Tiger Brands and uh, Pioneer had gotten together and agreed literally that they were all going to increase the price of bread by plus minus 30 cents um, on a specific day and they were all going to reduce the discounts that they were giving to their distributors to a level of 75 cents I believe it was and to cement that arrangement they also agreed that we are not going to poach each other's distributors so if your distributor complains about the discount they're not allowed to come to me and if they do I'm not going to take them on as a distributor. So that's what we found in that case. And as we started to investigate what was happening in the Western Cape, um, Premier then came to us and applied for leniency. And they asked, they, they, they gave us additional information, which we didn't have at that point, which pointed to the fact that this bread cartel was not only in the Western Cape, it was taking place all over the country. And it wasn't only about bread, it was also about milling, so it was about flour and wheat. Buyers and sellers must not be able to enter into agreements with each other that could influence the market. In other words, there must be no collusion. The cases that mainly come up in the news are the price-fixing cases. Uh, because I think because it's an easy concept for people to understand, you know, companies getting together in smoke-filled rooms, talking about prices and setting prices and basically cheating consumers. So the price-fixing cases, I think, are the ones that have been in the news a lot. And the examples, I think, are the bread price-fixing case that's been in the news quite a bit, the milk price-fixing case that's been in the news a lot, the um, pharmaceutical price-fixing case was also in the news a lot. But um, that is certainly not all our work. There are many other contraventions of the Competition Act. The market must be unregulated. In other words, there must be no government intervention. For example, there are no labour laws that prevent a firm from firing staff if it's making a loss. And lastly, but also importantly, there must be freedom of entry and exit. This means that new firms can enter the market if they think they can make a profit. But it also means that nothing will stop a firm exiting the market, perhaps if the business starts losing money. Of course, these assumptions are not entirely realistic. There isn't an economy in the world where all these conditions apply. But, in spite of perfect competition only being a theoretical ideal, we can still learn a lot about how a firm operates and what drives the decisions that the owner must make. Once you understand the basic principles of how a firm operates under perfect competition, we can start to explore how a firm operates in a more complex, real environment. Let's